So welcome back and in this video we're going to discuss how to create this shape. Now this should be a real simple one to create. As you can see it's just going to be a couple of radii which I'm going to highlight here. And then we have some in the middle here which are exactly the same so we know how to handle that situation. We do have our diameter to our circle and our overall length. The one thing that we're going to challenge and look at here is going to be our polygon. So let's go ahead and switch on over to AutoCAD and then we'll discuss the polygon once we get to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and knock out some of our normal things that we do. Let's go ahead and turn our grid off. We're going to make sure that our ortho is turned on. And since everything is in a straight line is the reason why I'm going to do that. Here are my running O snaps that I typically will use. And you can see my dynamic input is turned on. Alright, so let's go ahead and start creating this shape. I'm going to start by creating a circle with a radius here along the back. And it's going to have a radius of 20. I'll kind of scroll out a little bit. Let's go ahead and make a circle with a diameter right here at this center and then our diameter here will be 20. Now I purposely did not start this one at 0 comma 0 just in case if you are creating a drawing like this I just want to get you exposed to doing some O snap tracking or something else along that line so let's go ahead and make our other circle with a radius so I'm gonna go circle center radius remember I have to touch one of these circles do not click on it just touch I'm going to hover over this center and once I get the green tracking I'm going to kind of come out at an angle, rotate down and I see my green tracking lines here. I'll go ahead and type in 100, enter, and then I'll type in my diameter of my circle which is going to be 30 and then enter. Okay, next thing let's go ahead and put our fillets on the outside of this. So we're going to use the fillet command, I'm going to go to our radius, type in our radius which is 60. And we do have more than one, so I'm going to use the multiple option. Now I want to create that radius over along this side, so I'm going to left click here and left click here. I'm going to do the same on the top side here, so here and here. All right, let's go ahead and trim off the portions that we don't want to see. So we're just going to trim here and here. Now the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create a polygon that's going to sit on the inside of this. Now if you refer back to the, the drawing, you do see that it tells me the distance between the sides. So I know how far it is from this side going to that side. So that's going to be the huge determining factor of which one that I'm going to use, inscribed or circumscribed. If I take a pen here and I kind of create a circle, what you're going to see is that circumscribed, and I know, excuse me for my circle drawing here, but when you're inscribing a polygon on an object, that circle is going to touch each of the sides. So I like to always think of, I'm sorry, circumscribed as the sides. And you're going to see that when I create this. So as a reference, what you can do is go ahead and create a circle that has a diameter and place it here. And that diameter of that circle is going to be 35 kind of scroll into it a little bit and now we're going to define our, our polygon. Now this circle is totally unnecessary. If you can see it without it, do not create that circle. But I want to give you some kind of visual aid here. So I'm going to go to polygon. First thing that polygon asks is how many sides I have. Well in this case I have a hexagon so I have six sides. Next I need to define either the center or the edge of it. Well in this case I know what the center is so touch your circle and go ahead and left click right here on the center. And now it's going to ask you, do you want to define that circle by inscribed or circumscribed? So if you think of the IN as endpoints, and I don't know the distance to my endpoints, in this case I know it's circumscribed, I know the area are, it's defined by the sides of those. So I'll choose circumscribed. And now it's asking me to type in the radius. This is the most important part here, is remember that it's asking you for a radius. If you type in 35, it's going to make a super big polygon. So I'm going to type in 17.5. Or if you have the circle already drawn here, you can click on this quadrant 
and it's the exact same thing. So if you do have that reference there, it makes your life so much easier because you have a physical place where you can click on. So I'll click on it here, and then you can see that that shape is indeed created. I'm just going to go ahead and create this circle as an inscribed on here just to show you just what would have happened if you would have done that. So if I come back to my polygon, I have six sides. It's going to be located here at the same center. And then I chose inscribe. You will see that it's defining it by the endpoints of my polygon. So that's the difference between it. Circumscribe seems to be the sides will be touching the circle. And if you look at inscribed, the endpoints will be touching the circle. Okay. So for this example, I don't need the inscribed or this circle anymore. So we're just going to go ahead and delete them. All right. And that's going to be the end of this shape. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like these type of videos, please continue in to like and subscribe. And I will keep trying to put out content that I think that you'd like to see. If there's something that you want to see me do or explain a little bit more in further detail, please, by all means, leave me a comment and I'll be more than happy to do it. But until the next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.